Well, I realized through a um, nighttime experience that I needed to come back and um, do a little bit more with the principle I had set out before, which was to engage the significance of your mother and your father coming together with an intentional desire to want to merge your mother and your father's side of the family and to deal with this principle of masculine and feminine coming together and you having a sincere desire to want to experience your mother's side, your father's side, through the vessel of your mother and your father. Now, that is a lot bigger than you think it is. And I realized this because I was practicing it. And yeah, I realized I need to come back and slow you down. My suggestion is, if you decide to do this, do it gently. By that, I mean, maybe once a day, maybe no more than 30 seconds, or once a week no more than three minutes. Why? Because once you start really having a sincere desire to want to feel, and you point that at your mother, wow, there's a lot more that we have to feel about our mothers than we've ever known. And yes, if you want to do the same thing on the father's side, Yes, there's a whole lot more. And in the union of their relationship that gave the moment for your conception, yeah, there's a whole lot there. I'm sorry to tell you this, maybe it's obvious, but we won't be done with our mothers for the rest of our lives. We won't be done with our fathers for the rest of our lives until eventually we process, clean, receive, express the gratitude, the appreciation, but also filter out what's theirs and what's not yours, and so on and so on. There's a whole lot here. But I did say there are three primary phases to this. How you feel it within yourself, how you feel it with others, and how you feel it with the all. That's the typical self, others, and all process. I did say, if you use it with your parents, you can do that, but then go to the grandparents, that's your mother's parents, your father's parents, you have a four. And yes, you can experiment with doing the two on your mother's side, then the two on your father's side, or you can experiment with bringing all four of them together at the same time. There's more to that, and the impact of it, then you'll be able to feel, I promise you, there's a lot there. Now, those four obviously go into a larger diameter because there are four great-grandparents on your mother's side, and there are four great-grandparents on your father's side. You can do the same thing, though I have a tendency to do all of them at once, now, you just went through different diameters of inclusiveness. You and your family, your mother and your father, a one-two self function. Your grandparents, a larger diameter called others, and that includes a lot of others, by the way. The self-experience leading into the others, leading into the all of what the corresponding function is of how you access that with your great-grandparents. That may sound like a lot of jargon, but it's a personal experience to go there. So I'm going to divide this in half for a moment and suggest to you that there is a whole significance what happens on with just mothers. But let me just show you again where we are primarily focused. Remember, I'm suggesting that you consider 
focusing here. Again, for those of you who don't know, this is a heart. On top of this funnel-like existence is the thymus, larger in children, even down to two-thirds of the heart. The bottom part of this, like a chalice or a cup, to me, has all your emotional memories from the women. The one on the top is all of your emotional memories from the men. This is typically not connected. Even though it's laying there physically connected, I'm suggesting that my mother and my father may not have had a very connected relationship. Maybe your parents were aware and loved each other in their difficult time period. My mother and father were just teenagers in the Great Depression. Uh, yes, that was a long time ago. And my mother and my father, they, they met and got married in the early years of World War II. They had difficult existences. They had difficult lives. They conceived children. I wasn't conceived until 1949, like five years after the, four or five years after the war was over. But I'm saying that my parents didn't necessarily have an easy time. And I don't think yours did either. So they weren't very connected. Were they soulmates and they knew that and they, no, I don't believe they were, but I don't know for sure. Maybe yours were, but your grandparents and your great grandparents, you can see that you have a composite of these containers, instruments, based on how they all felt about each other. Now, that's more significant than you think. Yes, this is all glands, organs, body systems, and so on. Yes, this is genetic code, ancient or otherwise, local genome, RNA function. This is a whole bunch of stuff. Yes, this is chakra systems, 1 through 6 and 12 and so on. Yes, that's all of that stuff. I'm saying that it's significantly important to want to occupy it with feeling and awareness and a desire to discover what needs to be felt and what needs to be changed and what needs to be transmuted. And to do that, we're going to need some kind of help from an invisible spectrum. I would call that invisible spectrum the divine and the delivery mechanism the presence of the Holy Spirit. But that's just for you to decide what it is. Now, back to what I was suggesting. Let me show you a picture I used before. This is a picture that I've used before, and I don't know how well you can see this, but it's a woman sitting on the masculine. I call this masculine because it corresponds to the orange and the daytime. She's sitting with her back to the tree, and if you look more closely, you see there's a blue side with a moon. This is a sun and a moon. Maybe you can't see it from there. But there's a man on the feminine side. He's back to the tree with a woman on the masculine side. And this is their family tree. Now, we all have this. We have this family tree with masculine, feminine. In this case, it's a woman occupying the masculine side and it's a man occupying the feminine side and my goodness this has a whole bunch of metaphors right inside of it but I'm suggesting that you not use this particular metaphor or symbol I'm suggesting that you might use something that looks a bit more like the one I had up here before which looks like this I would prefer that you consider putting them together, looking at each other with their heads touching for all kinds of reasons about how this creates a symbol in itself, that you use your mother, you use your father, and you put yourself as a child at that point in the pericardium, and you feel what's available to feel. Now, when I did this, it brought a lot of different feelings, and I realized that some of them were pretty strong. 
and that it's important just to remind you this is a significant thing to do. Please do it respectfully. You can experiment, ask your guides to help you, guard you, protect you, whatever you want that to be. But this is a process that is enormously powerful. And I'm just suggesting that you maybe do it only once a week. It's that powerful. Now, you're going to need, by the way, the protocol, which is a natural ability to be able to bring things back to your heart and clean. And you've seen this picture I've used before of what it looks like to bring these three balls, the blue self, the pink one, others, the white one, all pointed back to what I call that 3.6, which is that place where the two halves of the heart meet. It's a strange thing to say, we live in a divided heart. Yes, we live in a divided heart that's subdivided. That subdivision is not only the, the difference between mother's and father's relationship, but their side of the family tree, subdivided, we live in a divided heart. The goal is to have a unified heart where maybe you can stand right in the middle. Let me just give you some other possibilities to consider. It might look something like this. I'm suggesting that we learn how to stand in the middle of that relationship between the pericardium and the thymus right at that crossover point, which, by the way, is the same thing as an equinox. And this is the band of life force coming from the father's family, and this is the mother's family. I'm suggesting that we learn to occupy that with gradually increasing experiences of feeling, awareness, the sincere desire to want to know the truth, and the humility to be able to experience it, and so on, and, and spend more time there. I'm suggesting that by dealing with some of the issues on your father's side of the family intentionally, dealing with some of the issues on your mother's side of the family, meet right there. Now, there are some more mystical ones I occasionally like a little more. Let me show you another one. I, well, I kind of like these. That's just something I got off the internet. I kind of like it because the blue is feminine. The, the red is masculine. The goal is, is to stand right there and occupy more of this with a sincere desire to want to feel it. Fair enough. That's where I would suggest you start, but let me take you just one step into your mother's side of the family. I'm going to use a different symbol. This is, you know, one you've seen before. You've looked at something like this. I'm suggesting that there are feminine attributes on your mother's side of the family. You can call them attributes if you want. I do. But at other times, I don't. There are mothers. They're mothers. Now, I, I know this is odd to think of your mother's mother, the symbology of the lake, being a body of water. Yes, I'm suggesting that it's not just an attribute. It's not just a symbology in nature called a lake of peace. Yes, it's true for me that in the higher presentation of this, right here at the pericardium 3.6, that mediating line between below and above, this is right at 3.6. This is where the pericardium meets. Well, I know that's odd, but just consider it. I'm saying this is a woman. You can call it an attribute. You can say it's a lake. You can say it's a kidney, it's a bladder, it's a lower intestinal function. You can say it's all kinds of things. You can throw the ovary in here if you want, but this is feminine. And it is a mother. It's your mother's mother. So feel that through your mother to feel your mother's mother. The, the, the key to this is to make it about people who are souls. Make it about people. 
Now, you can say that, wait a second, you know, what about, you know, the great grandmother? Well, well, excuse me, but this is a symbology in nature of an ocean and a moon. Yes, it's a symbology. Why the ocean? The ocean is an increase over the body of a lake. So when it goes from lake itself, I know that's odd, to ocean, it involves others. And to me, ocean is a female symbol. Mother ocean, if you will. It's a body of water, but it is, for me, it is a woman. Now, I'm not saying it's limited to these women, because for me, the moon is also a woman. It happens to correspond to the experience of sister, if you want, or your mother's mother, if you want, and you can have it in any form you, you want. You're not limited to the experience of how you want to feel it, but it has to do with a woman. Now, I don't have one which is as beautiful as I would like that corresponds to the pristine feminine of six girl, which is another woman. But how can it be a higher body of water? Lake, body of water. Ocean, body of water. Six girl, well, we can call it a body of water in the snow or all that produces rain globally. It has a whole bunch of things involved in it. It has a body of water. Six girl is a body of water, but it's a water that comes out of the pristine silence. Yes, there's bodies of water in the upper atmosphere. There are ice crystals in the upper atmosphere. Perhaps the highest of all clouds, there's a special name for them, I can't remember right now, but there's bodies of ice in the upper atmosphere. It's a woman. It's a mother. These body of bodies of water are women. They're mothers. And when you experience them beyond abstraction, and you experience them as actual parts of your family tree, you're only beginning the process of what they really correspond to on higher levels. So when you go into this exercise of feeling your mother and your father together and feeling your mother and your feminine and your feminine and your feminine, oh, did I mention you had other mothers on the other side of the family? Yeah, that's right. On your father's side of the family, let me give you a symbol of what at least one little element of that might be. I, I'm just giving you this. On your father's side, there's three more and more women. Your father's mother. We call that number one. And the reason for it is she corresponds to the bones. The bones are the mother of the blood and your stem cells the very cells that transform, heal, and do all kinds of very cool things, the stem cells come out of the bones and are moved and distributed by the blood and is primarily a woman. And I know it sounds really odd, but for me, it has a lot to do with mineral kingdom as a woman. And it's connected to plant kingdom, who, by the way, to me, is a woman. Plant kingdom, the one that nurtures, heals, has medicine, cuddles, creates, regenerates, you name it. Your father's father's mother is another mother. Now, you can call this Gaia if you want. You can call this Earth, and I do. And then you can go into the animal kingdom, which is to me another woman. All of them together, you can call Mother Earth if you want, or the Gaia of the Earth. And there's a whole bunch of other ones because there are different kingdoms within these that are women. 
Phew. I know that's a lot, but I'm suggesting that when you invoke in some form or another, you want to do this experience I'm suggesting about going here, you put yourself in the middle of that, desire for your mother and your father to have a an acclaimed accolade of appreciation, gratitude toward each other that probably never existed. So part of your challenge is to clean away as much as possible, and then maybe you can add in something like this to put right in the middle of all of that. If you want to use a symbol on the rose, I like that one. If you want to use a symbol of putting yourself as a small child in the middle of them, I particularly like this one. This is someone I know. You can put yourself in the middle of them, but just be aware when you go there, you have the right to go there and to create and feel, ask for the truth about, ask for help to help you experience it. You have the right to live fully in that dimension and heal or unify the separated heart. So go there like a small child, because that's what we are in reality. Go there, just experience it. So take the mothers from your mother's side and the mothers from your father's side and bring them together. It's a little bit more challenging if you consider a symbology like this one. I'm suggesting this is 3.6. This just happens to be an actual view of, literally, of the laminin molecule that composes all cellular constitutional function. This is a molecule that makes cells. It's an actual molecule. I'm suggesting this exists at and arrives at 3.6. I'm suggesting that you put yourself, the symbol of your self as a child, you take your mother and your father, you go there, but I'm suggesting you go there gently with an element of peace. I'll remind you that one of the primary things to go there with is to go there with a sincere desire to feel, starting with the element of peace because that's a access into the mother's side of the family. I'm urging you to be gentle with yourself. Go ahead and do it, but consider all the implications of what that really feels like and good luck with it. Maybe report back without how you're doing because I'd like to know how your experiences are. But remember, this is a gradual process where I'm suggesting you do just a little bit at a time and then you come back to the daily practice of hour to hour and to feel the sunset and sunrise and the months and the seasons and work toward this unification of your mother's family with your father's family. Because that's a great deal of what we're doing is how does it look to do this? How to unify while standing in the middle at 3.6, unifying the heart and mother and father's family and you and I have the right to be there. Now, the significance of global timing is that many people are abandoning this place. Why are they abandoning it? Because it is a natural tendency to want to do us versus them. If you do us versus them, you're only creating additional separation. Right now, we are in a global pandemic of us versus them. I'm suggesting because of that, many people have vacated this location and are now engaged in the separated heart and projecting the experiences of the increase of that separation by going into the us versus them. While the us versus them is happening, it produces a rare opportunity for you and I to be able to do something together. But there needs to be a sincere desire 
for me to do my own work, you to do your own work, and then there comes a level where doing the one in the heart basically requires that we unify in some beautiful fraternal teamwork to go in the process of doing this on a really healthy level. That's what this work's really about. So good luck to you. Now that I feel like I'm giving you a bit of a caveat, not to do it too fast or too much. You can if you want, but everything has its results, its consequences. So there, I've had my piece. You've had your warning. You also have an invitation to meet there because you want to, and you're building a passion to be unified in yourself and with others and the all. Okay, Whew. that's a lot for one day. Good luck with all that. Talk to you soon.